Hello, it's good to be able to welcome you to this our daily devotions on this Christ the King Sunday. We welcome you in the name of our risen Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ the King. On this Christ the King Sunday, we find ourselves in Matthew chapter 25 and reading verses 31 to 46. And here is the reading, the very famous parable of the sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did you, we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was in sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needy clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. I remember when I was a, a child, sometimes my mum's back would be turned while she was perhaps washing up at the kitchen sink and uh, I'd decide, well, while her back's turned, I'd perhaps get up to a little mischief. So I'd probably start messing or moaching in a drawer I wasn't meant to go in. And um, before long, she'd say, stop that. And I say, well, stop what? How, how do you know what I'm doing? And uh, she say, I've got eyes in the back of my head. Well, I never worked that one out until I was an adult, and then I, I realised it's probably because I'd, I'd gone quiet. Nothing to do with the fact that uh, she got eyes front and back. Um, but sometimes, if she hadn't spotted me doing something, but nevertheless had great suspicions that I had, uh, she'd accuse me of what it is I'd meant to have done. And then she might say, you don't have to say anything. You've got guilt written all over your face. In later life, if she really wanted to get my goat, uh, all she had to say to me was something like, you've got your father in you through and through. The reason why these memories come flooding back is reading this passage from the sheep uh, and the goats. Uh, because it, it seems to me that the sheep have surprise written all over their faces. Uh, to be fair, it's, I don't know if you've ever seen a surprise sheep, but I have to remember speaking figuratively here. Um, they've got surprise uh, written all over their faces. Uh, the goats, uh, I guess you could say they've got surprise written all over their faces, but I think really it's probably the other word for them, isn't it? Not so much surprise as shock that's written uh, all over their faces. I think the reason why the sheep have surprise written all over their faces is because 
they, if we talk about Christians, um, they have got their father in them through and through. And what they've got running through them is grace and, and mercy. And this is the reason why they're so surprised is because they saw someone in need, whether it's hungry, naked, in prison, sick, whatever it was. And it wasn't so much them saying, should I do something about this? Because grace and mercy just ran through them. Um, they so well, <laughs> just try to stop me. I can't help myself. I just got to respond to this need. And, and neither did they do it because they thought that, hold on a minute, we've heard this one. This might be Jesus in disguise, in disguise. so uh, you never know. Uh, we better just respond to this need. They never thought in those kind of terms. They just had grace and mercy running through them. Uh, and neither did they have the hope of heaven uh, by doing these good works of uh, philanthropic acts uh, as they're described here. They don't have the, the hope of heaven. Uh, by the way, this isn't a salvation by works passage. They don't earn heaven uh, by the things that they do. We know this because Jesus says to them, come and inherit what's been prepared for you since the creation of the world. Inherit it. It works on the same uh, basis as a gift. It's not wages. They didn't earn it. It's, it's still a gift. Uh, but even if it were, they, they didn't have that in mind. They saw someone in need, and because they were grace and mercy through and through, they couldn't help themselves. So they didn't have any eyes on any other thing other than the fact that there was somebody in front of them who was needy, and they were grace and mercy through and through. The goats, well, they're coming from a different place, aren't they? And, and therefore, perhaps it's not so much surprise that's written all over their faces, Again, I can't say I've ever seen a surprised goat, so I can't say what one looks like. Um, but it's more shock anyway. And the reason why they're in shock in this scene that uh, Jesus paints for us in uh, Matthew 25 today is not so much because they have grace and mercy running through them, so they just can't help themselves. No, for them, what runs through them like lettuce through a stick of rock is that they're just so calculating. So before they are going to help the person in need, if they're ever going to help the person at all, that person has to show that they're worthy of it. They've got to show that they're not in need through their own fault. They've got to show that they deserve to be helped. They've got to show that they're going to mend their ways. Check, 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 check. One checkbox after another. That's how calculating they are. And also, by the way, um, they've cottoned on to this thing that it might be Jesus in disguise. So that's how calculating they are. Uh, just in case you are Jesus in disguise, I better do something even if I am going to help. Uh, but basically, I, I won't be because uh, I, I, I've done the calculations and it's always on the other side of the equal sign says my self-interest first. Um, but they might be saying, well, Jesus, if I'd known it was you, of course I'd have helped. When I think about these things, it reminds me, once I, I met a, a woman and I was chatting to her, and then through the conversation, it turned out that she was a wife of someone I knew. So I said, oh, you're married to so-and-so, are you? And uh, she said she was. Conversation continued for another minute or so. And this is, oh, I can see now that your attitudes uh, completely changed towards me. Now you know who I am. Well, I was absolutely flabbergasted. Um, partly flabbergasted into frankness, but... Partly flabbergasted because it was simply not true. I hadn't changed my attitude uh, one iota. Um, but that's the kind of thing that the goats would have done. Uh, it would have made me a goat through and through if I'd have done that kind of thing. Because um, I often have known it was you, Jesus. You should have said, made yourself known. Then, of course, we'd have come to your aid if we'd have known it was you. Because that's how calculating we are. And if we'd have known there was a reward or the threat of punishment... Of course we would have helped, because that would have obviously been a massive uh, factor in our calculations. 
because that's what we are we're just calculating through and through it's the grace of mercy in the sheep that makes them sheep is this grace of mercy that runs all the way through them so much so that they don't calculate when they see someone in need they just kind of respond in, in the way that they do uh, when Matthew Bark, excuse me, William Barclay uh, comments on uh, this passage, uh, he has two lovely stories. I, I've always loved them anyway. Uh, I've been reading these since I was a teenager in William Barclay's commentary. And you'll have heard them over the years if you've heard me preach. Um, the, the first one he tells is about Francis of a, well, St. Francis of Assisi, is out one, out one day riding and uh, he comes across. Uh, someone whose face is completely gnarled uh, from uh, the leprosy from which he suffers. And St. Francis of Assisi immediately gets off his horse, walks over to this socially isolated person suffering from leprosy and gives him a hug. And as soon as he starts to hug him, all the symptoms of the leprosy uh, disappear from the man's face and he finds that he's staring into the face of Christ. And then the other lovely story that he tells is uh, the story of a Roman soldier called Martin of Tours. I think it's the French city, so it's spent T-O-U-R-S. Um, I think it must be pronounced Tours. Uh, Martin of Tours is a Roman soldier. And again, he comes one bitterly cold night across um, a beggar who's got his arms outstretched for alms and he's got nothing to give him because he's got no money but one thing he does he gets off his horse rips his Roman tunic in half and wraps one half of it uh, around the beggar that night sleeping under the half of the tunic that he has left Martin of Tours as a dream and in the dream he sees Jesus surrounded by his angels, but Jesus is wearing half of a cloak. And the angels say to Jesus, Lord, where did you get that battered old cloak from? And Jesus says to the angels, My servant, Martin of Tours, gave it to me. I don't know if you're the same as me, but if you are, I've got no reason to think that you are really, but if in any way you have any uh, comparisons to me, uh, you might be getting worried by now. Because I'm no St. Francis of Assisi. And I'm no Martin of Tours. And I'm not going to sort of be falsely modest about this and say I, I could never have my moments. Uh, but that's the thing about them, they are moments. I, I don't, I wouldn't say uh, grace and mercy runs through me through and through and I'll always respond to people in need uh, because I can't help myself. I'm no St. Francis of Assisi, I'm no Martin of Tours. I'm, I'm basically not fully goats, not fully sheep. But I think I'm probably in trouble if I, I read this passage and look at the consequences. Except, as I say, this isn't a salvation by works passage. And logically, uh, it can't be. Uh, if you're worried that it is, or even think that it might be, it can't be. Logically, it can't. Salvation by works could never work, when you think about it. Because it would place the Creator in your debt. He would actually owe you uh, for the things that you've done. That can't possibly ever be true, can it? So... Salvation by works is a non-starter, even from the point of view of logic. But even through other points of view, it's about grace. As I say, the sheep are told to come into their inheritance. Well, inheritance, as I say, works on the same level as a gift, and you can't earn it. But if you put the story back into the context of the whole of Matthew's Gospel and in particular what's about to follow as the story moves into Holy Week, then what you're seeing about the one who tells the story, Jesus, 
I was hungry. Well, yes, he was hungry because he spent 40 days in the wilderness having his obedience and his trust tested and he was very hungry. But he went through all of that for you and for me. I was in prison. He was a prisoner. And as such, they, they beat him. They gave him a false trial. They executed him. And they did all of that for you. And they did all of that for me. I was a stranger. Yes, yeah, he was a stranger. From the day that he was born, he had to flee the country as a, a political refugee. He knew what it was like to be an asylum seeker, a migrant, and he, and he does all that for you, and he does it all for me. Not just to stand in solidarity for us, but he does it because that's his sacrificial nature, acting out of mercy and grace. I was thirsty. He was thirsty. He hung on a cross and he said, I thirst. And the best that they could do in their mockery of him, our Saviour and our Lord, was to soak a sponge in vinegar put it on a stick and try and force it into his mouth. But all this for you, all this for me, even before we could ever know anything about him. So, here's my confession. I can have my moments when I feel like I'd stand with the sheep rather than the goats. But I'm not perfect. And I can never deserve anything from the hands of my Father God. But you know, he is grace and mercy through and through. He loved you, loved me so much that there are no lengths to which he will not go so that we'll be safe, so that we'll be secure. Not just for, hopefully, the better world in which we live here and now, but for always and forever.